my name is Peter Turek. Um, I am my role in college. Well, so I teach physics uh, uh, at the physics department, uh, and I do research of things that I find interesting. I myself um, tend to spend a lot of time with polarized light imaging. So this side is a polarized light microscope itself, so we can we can measure uh, very accurately very small changes in polarization caused by various things. Uh, it can be it can be biological objects. It can be we, we used to do optical data storage with this. As far as I know, what's out there in the world, this is the most accurate, uh, highest quality polarized light microscope yeah. that exists. And I remember setting up a stage where we had six degrees of freedom, we had two uh, XYZ movement and, and we had also turn movements and this whole thing was one big stage assembly that, that could rotate and turn and shift these ways and, and uh, all these stages are such that if you don't fix it then it moves and you have to fix it in order for that to stay in a certain position and uh, you know I set it up and fix that, fix that, fix that. I was absolutely certain it was fixed. And I stepped back, walked away and looked back. And, and I still remember like in slow motion, this, this whole stage is slowly, slowly, slowly starting to tear towards a pelican beam splitter. And, and, you know, you could see yourself in slow motion. No! And you run back and try to catch it and you miss it by this much. And, and it hits through the pelican beam splitter. Now, a pelican beam splitter is not Terribly expensive, um, you know. Now I would be angry, but you know, hundred quid you replace it. But back then in Hungary, where, where we had absolutely no access to Western, well, very little access to Western technology, and it was very very difficult to buy these things. It was like if you destroy something worth half a million pounds. So it was it was really really a big mistake, which I still remember, and it made me extremely careful around optical table, and and I tend not to break things anymore. So, um, basically, I'm doing my PhD on uh, brilliant scattering, which is basically um, um, a phenomenon that uh, arises when light interacts with matter and, uh, and basically, this basically generates um, a, f a frequency shift. And from this shift, basically, you can, actually, you can um, understand like elasticity properties of, uh, of material. The final aim would be a brilliant based uh, scattering based uh, uh, microscope, and this will allow to look at, for instance, different sort of sample, especially biological sample. What we will do, hopefully, will be also apply this to cancer uh, diagnosis. So, in university, I spent very little time at, at actually in the university. I only went into exams. I, I did not do too many lectures. Uh, because I was up in the research institute and I was actually doing proper research or what I thought it was proper research and I spent all my time up there in the institute during the undergraduate during degree so I literally only went in to, to do exams and I do not recommend this to anybody by the way apart from that I did learn that university uh, if, you, if you have the guts and the stamina and, and and everything else to go to university and and you make sure that when you don't understand something you ask the question because the most difficult thing I think for, for all of us when we grow up and even today that when I'm in an environment where I think that there, there are people who are smarter than I am I don't ask a question because I think that I, I will look stupid. I'm sure that every one of us had that feeling that you learn something, but you still have this nagging feeling when you want to think about it, that it's, it doesn't quite work. It, it, you don't quite understand it. It's, you read it, you derived everything, but, but, and you, you know all the material, but you don't quite... There is something wrong. And when there is something wrong, that means you don't actually understand it. And that is when you need to ask the questions. Uh, when you understand something, you are in perfect peace. And everything is beautiful and everything is easy and things fall naturally out of your work. My name is Jasmine Sidhu. I'm currently working um, in a research scheme uh, it, with the Photonics Group in Imperial College London. My task was to build a, a laser unit 
Now, the job of that, which you can see on the screen, is it's going to hold three lasers, three different lasers of different wavelengths, and the primary goal of that is to uh, combine the beams. And I think it's very useful because it gives you a hand on, hands-on experience on how you tackle research. Uh, and most certainly what I've learned is it's just not uh, physics that you do, you have to build the equipment first, which uh, most certainly before doing this placement I didn't think uh, was a critical part. The other thing that, that drives everybody who is in, who is in research is, is discovery and curiosity. And the best thing about the job in that side is that I can be a little child, I can play and I feel that I'm playing when I do research. I can be curious, I can be I can be abrupt, I can be stupid, I can be I, I, I can be I can be anything I want to be. And, and I can I have the ability to to say, okay, I want to know what the answer is behind this. And I keep going up until either I find it or I die. And, and that is something which is quite amazing that you can do. Not, not many people, you need to realize that there are not many people out there who can do for the job what their hobby is. And if you are given that, you've got to appreciate it a lot. And I feel that I do have that and I think that's amazing.